Hi, Ronnie Russ from the West Ham Network. Hope you are all safe and well. If you're new, Andy, give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share. Give it a bloody good subscribe. The season's over. Oh, we can all decompress, although all the silly season's already started, haven't we? Already started. Anton's videos the last couple of days and my videos and all the transfer rumours that we're going to be having the next... Christ. It doesn't even open. The transfer window doesn't even bloody open until, I think, it's like June the 10th or something like that. But anyway, hope everyone is safe and well. If you want to give it a like, give it a comment, give it a share, give it a subscribe. I'll just tell my Siri to be quiet. Um... We've got another appreciation night. Another appreciation night. We know you, you guys love them, so we've, you know, we, we obviously were ploughing on the next series, so to speak. And today we have got um, the, and I'm really, really looking forward to talking to about, about finding more about Pop Robson because I've never really understood. I know of him, but I don't know him if that makes sense. So I always find this more of an education than anything for myself. And also because we've interviewed people like like Crossy and, and Tony Cotty, and they speak about the influence Pop Robertson had on their career. So it'd be great to find out more about the man himself. I believe he may be watching. If you are, good evening, Pop. Hope you're well. Hope you're safe and well. Um, we have, unfortunately, not, Nigel's not well. Shedman's not well. So you've got Bert and Ernie today. You've got Ant and Deck. You've got uh, Lauren Hardy. You've got Hartson and Kitson. You've got Russ and Martin. Oh, yes. I think I like Laurel and Hardy, but I was just thinking which of those. I don't know which of us. Oh, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Come on, let's be honest. Who would be Laurel? Who would be Hardy? Let's be honest. Come on. I haven't got any hair to do the Stan Laurel thing. That's the only problem. But there we are. Yes, Russ, great to see you. End of the season. And and Kurt has kicked his last cat, hasn't he? It would appear. Well, he's kicked every look like every fucking journalist has been kicked. Yes, this morning. <laughs> God, Do you notice that that Russ got in a little F word there because we are after the after nine o'clock. Well, after sure. nine o'clock, after so there'll be plenty of effing and blinding. There will be. Um, um, yeah, it was a bit of a media scrum, wasn't it, outside Thames Magistrate Court today? Let's be honest; it must have been a slow news day. It was. Um, again, nothing happening in the news today. No. Clearly. Nothing, nothing. No one's been invading anyone or anything like that. No, 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 no. It's more important about this I guy. Thought, you know, I, I thought maybe they're... Can you imagine Kurt Zuma at a Boris Johnson party? I was just kind <laughs> of thinking of some weird things that could happen. That would be pretty weird. Well, it? even if they wouldn't get fined anyway, it doesn't matter. No, anyway. Well, no, politics. That that, because we're, we're a lot more lenient than the French. Um, oh, you know, I know this isn't something we should be talking about. Maybe... But we kind of all thinking about it, so let's talk about it because that's what <laughs> that's what we do on Russ's channel. We talk about the things that other channels don't talk about, which is why we're taken off the air every now and again. <laughs> exactly, um, we won't wait for a while before you come back. Yeah. Um, I would I would just say about that that yeah. um, if that had happened in France, and one has to say that because he's a French citizen, I'm not even sure if if you do something like that abroad. If that's still you as a French national are uh, culpable in law, but it, it it's a it is a, um, a custodial sentence in France. I don't believe it would be over here. Thank goodness, one Thank has goodness. to say. Thank goodness, indeed. indeed. Imagine that defence without Mr. Zuma. Oh dear, and I mean, I mean, to be honest, it was. I mean, it would have been. Yeah, we would have. Because we knew when the court date was, it's been adjourned to the 1st of June, isn't it now? Which is like next yeah. week. What's the point? Yeah. Um, and obviously that would have been, you know, and we see you've got the Seville scarf on there, Martin. Obviously you was in Seville last week. I was indeed. And a lot of people go, what would, why would you go to see the team that have just beaten your own team? <laughs> why would you go and see them have a chance of winning the competition? Which, of course, as we know, they did. Well, I was a bit curious about 100,000 Glaswegians in Seville, especially where we had temperatures by Friday of 41 <laughs> degrees centigrade. Um, and I learned a lot about um, sectarianism. Uh, I learned about that. I learned that Rangers and Celtics isn't just about football. Um, there was a horrible, horrible moment on the train where my good friend John Rotomsky, um, the Great Irons Food Banks, a gentleman and I were sitting in the corner of, of this this 50 seat carriage and there were the two of us and there were two Rangers fans then there were four German fans in their Eintracht Frankfurt things 
And the rest of the Glaswegians started singing, there were 25 British bombers in the sky. And then you think, oh, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it, guys, don't do it. Anyway, the four Germans are like, heads down. And John and I are like, heads down. And then the Spanish police came in who clearly didn't understand what was being sung. Although, I don't know, RAF, bombers, might have got a hang about it. Two together, clearly. yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. We will talk a little bit more about it because it was certainly um, worth going. Um, I I was absolutely sickened at the standard of the football. And let me just say, and I know no one's going to want to hear this, but we would have absolutely fucking walked it. (laughs) Both of them were shocking. And you think, how the effing hell did Frankfurt, who win two home games in the whole of the second half of the season, one of which was us. Yeah. How on earth, finishing 11th or whatever it was in the Bundesliga, who clearly, if they'd lost that final, would not have been anywhere near Europe. How on earth? I mean, Glasgow Rangers should have beaten them, to be fair. Yeah, and there was yeah, something yeah. a little bit ironic about Ramsey, a Welshman, being the one who missed the penalty. <laughs> the thing is, I couldn't, I couldn't wind up the Glaswegians and... Probably with no, it's probably know, wise not to. With probably forest. fifty thousand of them there, it wasn't a good idea. But I was saying, is he is Ramsey Scottish? You know, doing the wind up. And the bloke looks at me like, don't, don't, son, don't. You know, <laughs> just you don't, like, don't start, go there. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah, lots of lots of little uh, trinket moments come up. But we are here to talk about Pop Robson. We and, are. And um, I want to throw because I know you're going to show that the wonderful little taster. I want to. F- I want to throw a few things your way. We'll start with the the his just if any of you are thinking, oh, Paul Robson, who's he? Let me just give you a guy who had two periods at West Ham. Let me give you his stats: one hundred and fifteen appearances, fifty one goals. That's his second period. His first period, one hundred and thirty nine appearances, fifty three goals. So overall, two fifty four appearances. 104 goals. Not many wow. have scored more than 100 goals for West Ham. And mm. remember, Tony Cotty only scored 146. So if you think about it, he only got 42 more than Pop Robson, and he played a lot more. Wow. That's so that, that that all of you who don't know who Pop Robson was, that stat alone should get you interested in this program. There are so many fantastic... Did you know Paul Robinson played for Chelsea? For fuck's sake! Well, I know, he's, I know he's a big Sunderland fan as well, wasn't he? He my... was, and he came back at the age of 38 to score a, a winning goal for them and keep them up at 38 years of age. And also, when he left West Ham... At, both Sunderland and in his second thing, Sunderland and West Ham have both failed to get promoted. Mm. And he thought, do I stick with West Ham or do I go to Sunderland? So he went to Sunderland, who got promoted, West Ham didn't. But yes. West Ham won the FA Cup. So what would you prefer in your career? To have had one of many promotions, which you could have had, or to have stayed at West Ham? And why? Well, you might say, well, we wouldn't have won the FA Cup because we wouldn't have signed Stuart Pearson. Blah blah yeah. blah 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 yeah. blah. You you can't you can't tell that. But this is a guy who, in two seasons in particular, in one he scored twenty eight goals, cool. and in um, the second big one he scored twenty six. Again, not many players in later years. No, scored that no, many exactly. What was, it, what was it? Hammer it said. Hammer it said. I think I think Salah's got twenty. Yeah. Pop Pops and Golden Boot, 28. Son and Salah, Scott Logue, seems low-key with 23. Yep, well the played the Happy Hammerette. She's absolutely spot on there. And, I mean, this is a guy who scored. Uh, and we're talking about the same sort of numbers of games in a season. You might play 42. He did play in 71, 72, 72, 3, 73, 4. He played yeah. 42 games. Sorry, not 73, 4. For two seasons in a row, he played all the games. But the other interesting thing is, I think the other, there are many more than that, is Keith Robson, his namesake. So I want to get, you know, I like to throw you a little taster while we, yeah. look, at the, we look at the thing. I want you to, and it's going to be a, I mean, no one's going to know this straight off the top of their head. So you can have a little guess. There was one season only 
when the two Robsons played together. I had this idea that you never see them together. So was <laughs> was Keith Robson Brian Robson with a wig? And no, because they did play uh, two games together. So proving that they were different people. And one of those games. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And I, I, I watched this game, but obviously I didn't know. You'll know why later on. Yeah. One of these games featured the deb debut of one of our greatest ever players. So you've got this guy making his debut on the field with Brian Robson and Keith Robson, and it was an away game at West Bromwich Albion, which we lost. We got thrashed in it. Um, but the player who made his debut, so you've got to think, who was the player who made his debut in a game? A famous, very, very famous West Ham player who who um, made his debut in a game where Keith and Brian Robson played. That's the first question I'm going to ask you. Jesus the second God. question I'm going to ask you is, how many games do you think Keith and Brian, I may even have said it, if I have done, then you remember, <laughs> you get it. How many d games did they play together? Because they did play together. Um, and did they ever play together? At Upton Park, that kind of thing you've got to be thinking about. And, um, yeah, a few other things. Brian Robson also married an English international sportswoman. So you've got to think, <laughs> do you know what sport she played? <laughs> All these fabulous questions. Oh, you know I've been doing my homework. You, can tell, right. you can tell the season's over, Martin. No, it, no it's, not just that. it's not just that. It's not just it's that Nigel's not here tonight. Yeah. And it's, I feel like I've only got one leg, so I've, I've got to come in with loads of stuff. Otherwise, it won't be interesting because I won't have that lovely that lovely banter. But um, you and I will do our best, won't we? We'll do our best. Don't worry about that. All right. Are you going to shut? Are you going to roll? Yes. Roll VT. Roll VT. Right. Here we go. Let me just uh, do that. Hammers fans had been watching Brian Pop Robson's acrobatic goal against them for Newcastle at Upton Park in September 1970 on the opening match of the day titles for five months when Ron Greenwood stepped in and signed him in February 1971 for £120,000. Goal scorer supreme with 104 strikes in 227 appearances Robson was one of the cornerstones of Hammer's re-emergence as a force in the league in the early 70s, and his 28 goals in 1972-73 saw West Ham climb to six in the table, their best achievement for nearly 15 years. Robson was duly elected Hammer of the Year at the end of that prolific season by the fans. Here are 15 goals from his first spell at Upton Park starting with a wonderful hat-trick against Sheffield United in a League Cup quarter-final tie at Upton Park back in November 1971. And note what a perfect full Monty hat-trick it is too. Left and right feet and a header. One to savour. Played on nicely for Bonds, what a good run by the number four. And Robson, oh, is down! Off the post, Brian Robson, and four and a half minutes gone. West Ham ahead. For Hurst. Oh, Robson in the clear. And a goal! Brian Robson, his second goal, made for him by Jeff Hurst. And Robson absolutely delighted with it. So West Ham with something like three minutes left now and four goals to the good. It'll be a surefire certainty now for the uh, semi final draw. Brookie. Play there for Robson. Will this be his hat trick? It is! Yes! Brian Robson, West Ham's fifth, and his hat-trick. A lot of room now for Brian Robson to take on this the, uh, Manchester United defence. Charlton was there after him, and a misunderstanding there between Hurst and uh, Robson. And Gowling finds Morgan. Lampard. West Ham still having by far the better of it territorially, still not finding enough openings for their own liking. Hurst now finding Redknapp. Redknapp. Across that goal, no. Can someone poke that? Robson, yes! Brian Robson has done it! He squirmed that through. A lot of credit to Harry Redknapp, though. And Sadler was totally unaware that Best was in such a dangerous position.
turned on superbly for Robson, and a goal! Oh, a wonderful goal for West Ham! What a superb goal! So much more of the game, and the chances have come their way, but now for the second time find themselves behind. Robson hitting a goal! Oh, Robson! Two goals in a little more than a minute, and Brian Robson makes it 2-2. That was one played to perfection by this fellow, Dudley Tyler, into the path of Brooking. Now Tyler then with the corner for West Ham. Another low one again. Bonds getting right down there, and Robson turning it in. Brian Robson, the second goal. More. Best. Lampard. Holland. Lampard. Turned again towards Brooking and over the head of hockey. And turned on by Watson. He hardly got a touch to it, but that touch was enough. Putting West Ham 3 0 up. McAllister well beaten. Robson. Play on, says the referee. In fact, he changed his mind there, the referee. I had a quick look at him and he had the... Uh... Well, that's incredible because he had a whistle in his mouth and now he's giving a Shaw lecture. If he's got to give him a lecture, that's got to be a free kick. Lampard turning it in. And now Robson turning it back and a goal! But there was a deflection, so Wolves had none of the luck there. Here's Frank Lampard, the square ball to Bobby Mott, pushes it forward, best to Brooking, going out wide. Here's Robson, and a beautifully worked goal from West Ham. Robson now has 14 for the season. Here's Johnny Harris, feigning one way, pulling the ball back. Not a good header from Conroy, Brooking, and Robson has a second, and the Stoke marking all over the place. A lovely finish, and Robson in the right place again. Bonds let that run nicely, shook off the challenge, and finds Holland. Little touch to Robson. Leaves it to Charles, he's got best to aim at at the far post. Good header from Best, here's Robson. Hammers take the lead. A beautifully worked goal. Robson again on the goal line. Tommy Taylor at the front of the goal area. Bonds coming towards it. Robson. Robson coming off the goal line. Gets the back header to him. Like the rest of the West Ham side, how on earth do you beat Peter Schiff? But here's Brooking now, a rather Robson now with a great chance, and that will do a terrible mix-up in the Leicester City defence. And Robson finally gets the ball in, where Shilton had no chance. Brian Pop Robson, of course, enjoyed two careers at West Ham, though as he often said later in his career, he may have left to go to Sunderland at the wrong time. For although they only avoided relegation by one point that season, the very next West Ham were to win the FA Cup for the second time in their history, beating Fulham 2-0 at Wembley. And the crowd at the far end rise in salute. After his brief return to the North East to play for Sunderland, Robson rejoined West Ham in 1976, hitting the target at the same rate as he left off top scoring again for the club for the next three years in succession. Lampard is a goal, Robson! And it's a goal, that lovely free kick by Lampard, putting it across and nobody moved, but Pop Robson came through like a bullet. They may have won the FA Cup in May 1975, but Robson rejoined the Hammers after one of their worst ever runs in the league winning only two games from Boxing Day 1975 to early November 1976. 
and both of those oddly against Queen's Park Rangers at Upton Park. It wasn't much of a surprise then when the Hammers were relegated, even with Robson and his goals. But he hit 26 in the old second division in 1978-79, his last season at Upton Park and West Ham's first in a lower division for over 21 years. Again, rather oddly, the season after Robson left the club for the second time, West Ham won the FA Cup. as they have done, but Taylor will lead it away. And the Hammers push forward. I don't think they'll fancy a journey to Vicarage Road next week. Here's Robson. Brooking. A lovely cross to the far post. Cross and Robson! And Hammers have taken the lead with just 10 minutes left. A superb cross from Brooking. And David Cross towered at the far post to set up Robson, but it was Robson in the mood, first of all, that found Brooking. And yet again, another one of those crosses. He's been popping them over Rankin for most of the game. Cross got up there, and Robson should see West Ham home. 1-0. As it is at the moment, Brownlee bringing it forward for Newcastle. Cut out by Brush. Played on again by Robson for Brooking. Brooking playing it in for Robson. Oh! Beautiful goal. Robson against his old club, but a goal of classic proportions. And there we go. Oh, Great. I've got to tell you, those That's are brilliant. Beautiful. Those of you who are my age, we won't say what that is, but you know who you are. You wouldn't know who Robson is. 21, yeah. I tell you what, that just, that little sequence, and I know we've had some absolutely brilliant players on this on this little uh, yeah. series we do, but that sequence, oh, just a kid, a kid on the terraces again watching those. Well, I think a lot, same in the, in the chat, there's, lo there's loads of people go, oh, this was, this is, this was my era. Um, you know, this, this, you know, who remembers the peanut man and, you know, all they, all these type of things and peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> peanuts. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I Chuck them up. You can chuck them up and you chuck the money down. Can you imagine doing that now? Yeah. Exactly. You chuck your credit card down and you just run off with it. <laughs> yeah. Tap, yeah, tap and pin. Yeah, exactly. Contactless. <laughs> no, but it's, it's true. It's you know, it, it's it seems that it's that it sort of resonates with a lot of people watching as well. I think it's the right maybe the age group or something in terms of people watching. Obviously, myself, I was never around to see pop. But obviously, you know, you see the players, and I think you know you've got a bit of everyone there. You have got a bit of Bobby Moore. You have got a bit of Jeff Hurst. You have got a bit of Trevor. You have got a bit of Billy Bonds, Frank Lampard. You have got these sort of iconic he's all played with across across a, sort of a couple of generations really it seems yeah yeah absolutely and and look at the players he's played with if yeah. you think about it there's always brooking brooking because uh, brooking loved pot robson whenever he yeah. talks i have interviewed trevor uh, obviously a few years ago now but when you interview trevor brooking about pot robson as we did quite a few times his eyes lit up and you just you mm. knew that that uh, uh, Trev really loved uh, Pop Robson because there was something about him. That little, he was so thrilled when he scored. He waves his little fist like, yes, yes. And um, and you see, he's scoring goals against the top sides there, yeah. loads yeah. against Manchester United and at Old Trafford. And he had the ability... I would say, first of all, that the, what I would call the Tony Cotty uh, 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 goal knack of being in the right place at the right time. He managed to get himself in in between defenders and goalkeepers the way we don't yeah. see. Yeah. We don't see yeah. players do so much these days, although I did notice uh, our, our home game against Chelsea this season. Didn't Lanzini do that when he got the penalty? Was it? Yeah, just, yeah, just crept, he crept in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In between Mendy and the defender. That is what a striker needs to do because you win penalties then or you score goals. And his finishing, 
I mean, he could dink them, he could whack them, he could tap them, and he, he just had the ability to know what to do when the ball was in the right space in the six-yard box. And those of uh, those of you that um, – there we are, Trevor and Pop won a golf tournament as that's, well. That's okay. Nigel. That's Nigel, but, by the way. Well done, Nigel. <laughs> we're, we're missing you, mate, but we'll do our best. We'll do our best. Yeah. But, um, yeah, this, this – this kind of uncanny knack he had. My first season at West Ham was 70-71. Mm. And I saw, I first saw Brian Robson, probably my fourth or fifth home game. We played Newcastle and they beat us 2-0. And Robson scored both the goals. And one of them, it is, it was filmed. It was on much of the day. One of them was this unbelievable volley. Doing things that you don't see, but you certainly didn't in those days see players do. This kind of acrobatic off the floor volley, almost like tipping over. It wasn't really an overhead, but it was almost an overhead. Yeah, yeah. He ended up finishing on his back. Um, and he just hit it beautifully. He caught it absolutely. And I'm afraid um, Bobby Ferguson, he was like, no, he ain't going to say that. Whoosh, right. I say that. It might even have been Peter Grote, because you did see Peter Grote in his, in his cap. You also saw in those little uh, se segments. Peter Shilton in a white goalkeeping shirt. Yeah, white. I mean, I, I remember seeing. Hell? Yeah, I remember Parksy used to have a white one as well. I've seen pictures of him in, in white, a goalkeeper in white, especially those very mud strange. pictures as well. It's like, very it's not strange. very strange indeed. Okay. Very well, strange. I, I, I mean, um, so I've, I've, I'm seeing him in September thinking, oh, here we go again. So we didn't make a fantastic start to the uh, 70 71 season. I mean, this is my first season. I'm going to go to every home game. And I, I went, I had my little paper round. So I financed it myself. I wasn't even taking money out of my respective parents' pockets. I was I was earning it all myself. And I, I, I made just enough to get to the game. And in the first season, don't ask me why, I sat down. Perhaps it might have been my dad saying, you can only go if you sit down. So eventually I got to the North Bank. But in the first season, I was in the West Stand which became the Rio stand, those of you who remember Upton Park. Um, and, you know, for me, another defeat. And, yeah, OK, this guy scored these two great goals. Then I came home. It's on bloody match of the day. You know, no, the one time, because your team is rarely on match of the day, maybe one one yeah. weekend out of five or six, especially when you're not playing well. Um, I mean, at least people complain when we're the last game of, 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 the, of match of the day. In those days, if you didn't play well, you weren't on much of the day at, at all. all. Yeah, yeah. Nobody went. Nobody came down <laughs> to film you. ITV felt because they had ITV was regionalised in those days for um, for football. So there was all, there was only a certain number of London clubs. So even if West Ham were playing badly, they were likely to be one in six weeks. You'd see them at home and Brian Moore doing the commentary. But this one was unusually. Um, a BBC game, David Coleman, because David Coleman had this way of doing this commentary and everything was saying really... And you could be watching, I don't know, uh, Ebb's Fleet against Halifax. And it makes it sound amazing. Yeah. And then you think, wow, what a game. And you think, no, good commentary. And that's what it is. <laughs> and uh, that, that day, uh, I mean, uh, it's Robson, what a fantastic goal. Is it? Blah, blah, blah. And then, to make matters worse, the BBC, for some reason... In, in October, you don't do that. You do it at the beginning of the season, you do a new set of titles. But they obviously felt Robson's goal was so great, they stuffed it in the bloody leading titles the following week, and we had to watch it every single game for the rest of the <laughs> bloody season because he stayed at Newcastle. So every time you're going to watch those, no, it's BBC One, it's match of the day. I think here comes those fucking Robson Here it comes goal, again, yeah. We've got to watch it. Every day, so you think, Oh my god, one nil! Yeah, and I, I do believe that was even one nil that that was the first one. <laughs> so there we are. And um, Appar apparently, the Peter Shilton, I'm just googling it now. Apparently, he had it, it was personalized, his white goalkeeper's kit. He was uh, he wore it uh, in these last season, I think, last season that Leicester, I think, the, the, the crest sporting initials PS underneath the Admiral logo is evidently he was the first ever player to wear a personalized kit. 
And since he's gone on Twitter, he should put BS on most. Of <laughs> yeah, it. BS, right? That's a, about, exactly. But all due, due respect, Peter, because you did you did come to West Ham. We so wanted you to play for us, but that kind of didn't happen, did it? No. But um, that's our little Peter Shilton moment. But you've got to <laughs> say, my my memories of Peter Shilton, which I know is a digression, but it's a yeah. worthy one. Stoke are playing. Wait for it. Would it have been Newcastle? I think it, it might have been Newcastle. Anyway, this ball comes pumped down the field and Shilton rushes off his line, kicks the ball, completely misses it and ends up sitting on his ass. And whoever was just keeping up with the play, the striker, just kind of went through and tapped it. <laughs> My friend, this is this is really disrespectful to someone who's one of England's <laughs> great ever goalkeepers, but I'm sorry that's my memory of Peter Shilton. <laughs> there you are, and also keeping us out many times uh, for Nottingham Forest and other clubs over the years. Indeed, so we, we're going to look at uh, when Pot Robson first comes to uh, West Ham. Yep. Um, he did come. I'm happy. I'm happy to say uh, um, in. Uh, well, he, he made his debut on the 24th of February 1971. So he came towards the end of that season um, and just scored three goals, 14 appearances. Now, he was signed for 120000 And to let you know how much that was, the previous season, Martin Peters had been signed for Tottenham Hotspur for 100000 He was the wow. first £100,000 footballer. Now, remember... This is a, a player from the England World Cup winning side. So he's no no um, uh, guy, no, no player. He's a, he's a proper England World Cup. And he, he went for 100,000. So if you think about Robson coming to West Ham just maybe a year later, um, in fact, it probably was almost exactly a year later for 120,000. So... Robson was was seen as a, a the person we needed. By February 1971, we were looking at the table and thinking, mm, this might be us going down. And we'd been in the yeah. first division since the late fifties. So, and you you still you, we just sold Martin Peters. So you're thinking, okay, you break up the big three at West Ham. The next season, uh, they get relegated, and clearly Ron Greenwood didn't want that. And so, having seen this goal scored at the beginning of every single episode of Match of the Day for <laughs> almost a whole season, Ron Greenwood thought, hmm, we might have him. So, he put in this huge bid. It would be like us bidding, but it wouldn't be like anything now because the Premier League is completely different to, to football then. But uh, trying to give you a, a – perhaps us trying to bid for – another aspiring top six club, like a, a Leicester or a Wolves player offering maybe, I don't know, 60, 70 mil. Uh, who could you think of? James, what's his name from Leicester? James let's, Madison. Let's see. Let's who's, see. Who's not in England, Scott, but Jared Bowen is. He is. That's a good point. I, that should have been the thing we led with. I beg your pardon. I, I should have led with Jared Bowen. Shame on me for not mentioning that. But um, so, so we're talking about Robson, that would be like our signing Madison, I would think. Yeah, and that yeah. would be like, we could persuade Leicester maybe to part with him. Let's say he was, we decided he was the player we wanted. I and mean, if we bid maybe 60 mil, you reckon we'd get him for that? Probably, yeah. I reckon you would. Yeah. yeah. And um, Robson was still quite young then, obviously younger than, than Madison. But um, so it's that kind of move. But it's a move also with a lot of money. It was a lot of money for West Ham to pay. Yeah. And, as you know, that West Ham were not forthcoming with the money very much when it came to signing players, if they didn't have to be. Not much has changed there. Although well, now we've, now the money's there. We've got Moisey we're in Moise We Trust, who's not so keen to sign anyone unless he's absolutely, he's got that sort of Scottish thrift yeah. about him without being too much of a stereotypical one. He's also <laughs> seen, let's face it, the manager before made some of the worst signings. That we've yeah, ever that's, a good, that's a good point. They've got form, haven't they? So it's like, yeah. You can't blame him for being careful, but we're all watching, as you said, the, 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 everyone's saying, oh, look, they're going to buy so-and-so. No, they're not. Not yet. They can well, maybe tap them up. I'll, them I'll, up. I'll, show you a, I'll show you a slide in a minute. It, 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 we, we've, I, it, people we've been linked to in the last month, there's about 60 already. As much as that. Yeah. And we'll probably sign, well, it'd be nice to sign six, wouldn't it, really? But <laughs> this, this was one of those great signings, one has to say. Although um, Robson was only to play 
three well you'd probably say three full seasons it's really like kind of two and two halves two and two halves yeah Starting at the end of 71 for 70 71 and the end of 73 74. Um, I didn't play many games that uh season, so was obviously injured. Uh, but he, he played all the games in 71 72, all yeah. the games in 72 73. Wow, and yeah. um, what's quite interesting is uh, you've got Klein Best, Jeff Hurst, you've got three strikers, mm, mm. three strikers you don't. See, even for teams to do that now, you might have two. You might have Derek Dugan and John Richards. If you're Wolves, those of you who are with me, you remember those days in the early 70s. You might have your two. You might have Alan Clark, Mick Jones, your lead strikers. Okay, you see the twos? Yeah. West Ham had three. And Clyde Best uh, was about to enjoy his greatest season as well. We haven't, got, we haven't even got one at that moment, have we? <laughs> I know, no, well, there we are. We have no, it's true. We haven't even got one striker. So those of you who go, oh, you old gits talking about the past. The, the point is, West Ham were shocking, I've got to tell you. And, and their, their most shocking season is uh, Pop Rotten's last season, which is 73-74. Bearing in mind, this is the season before we win the FA Cup. 73-74, Bobby Moore's last season. Oh, my goodness me. That is such a shocking season. How did we not go down then? How do we, bearing in mind well, we've, we've got all these bits and pieces in, in a team, and yet in 72, 73, I have to tell you, Russ, I promise you with every fibre in my body, that is a season where we could have won the league. We finished six in the end, but Robson was absolutely on fire. He scored wow, 28. 28. Goals. Wow. 42 games, only two in the League Cup, two in the FA Cup, 28 altogether. The previous season really was the one where he first uh, started to do it. 71 72. Again, those of you uh, oldies like me will remember our fantastic run to the semi final against Stoke, where it took four games before they finally beat us, <laughs> including a Jeff Hurst penalty saved by Gordon Banks, all these great names. I had Jeff Hurst scoring a penalty at Stoke and, and us looking like we were going to get to the final. We didn't get to the final, but Robson scored that fantastic, perfect hat trick against Sheffield United. That was another team he tended to score a lot against. So we were really excited about um, uh, Pop Robson. 71 um, 72, not a fantastic season for West Ham, but they weren't anywhere near relegation after the season before when they had almost gone down, just the, the, the crap form of Burnley. Uh, sadly gone down this season and Blackpool who went down that was the only reason we didn't go down mm. but then we had a rebuild and then 72-73 we just absolutely fly and Robson scored 28 goals and I, I remember um, that's right only ever West Ham player finish top flight scorer with explain that to me I'm not fit that's from only ever West Ham finish top flight top scorer is he ain't what Nige Please let us know, Nigel. He's, he's oh, not well, Nigel, and he can't, he's, can't tie he's at, like this. Nigel, he's don't drink bed. milk. Don't drink milk. After he's not meant, I thought he's not meant to do anything. I thought he's, he's texting anyway. Um, Is yeah. it? All right. Well, yeah, someone explain that one to us, because I'm sure there's a good point there, which we just got. Yeah. You're getting so excited. You're getting all your fingers messed up. He is. Go back to the old text. days. But, um, yeah, these 28 goals, I remember a fantastic interview with, with Brian Robson. Um, quite a time after that, I think in his second period, where it might have been Brian uh, Moore, probably more likely going to be Brian Moore, and, and Robson came in. He's quite a shy guy. For a yeah. guy who's so prolific, you mm. often get that, don't you? You know, people like Steve Potts, is a prolific high... high um, a prolific appearance. goal scorer. No, prolific <laughs> high appearance. I did say high appearance. Uh, um, I, think, I think Nigel was saying that he is the, only, is the only time that we've had a top flight... Oh, I beg your pardon, that he was the top scorer yeah. in the league. Yeah, I, I, I've got to say... I cannot believe that Hurst's 41 and 40 weren't the top, was it? Can you do? Can someone do the check on that? Hurst scored for 40 and 41 in the late 60s. That's got to have been the top scorer for... I mean, Greaves probably got 48. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, yeah. But check, right. it, check that out, because my, my, natural, my natural feeling is that maybe Hurst, certainly in one of those times, the two seasons he scored is in his 40s, 40 and 41, 
he's got to have been the top scorer in one of them. But yes, yeah, certainly in the modern age, if we're calling the 70s modern, only 50 years ago. But um, yeah, so <laughs> in he comes for 120,000, settles down. We have that really good League Cup run where we thought we were going to win it. And then 72, 73, we had, we had this fabulous season. And Robson, talking about it in his second session, second um, period at West Ham, said in the interview with Brian Moore, he said, the one thing I learned about football uh, a cu couple of seasons after that, he said, I thought, when I scored 28 goals, he said, somehow, I thought every single one I would got absolutely right. You know, left foot, right foot, header. And he said, 28, he said, I thought I was really like a goal machine. And he said, and then someone had done a, um, a, a, a sort of collection of his goals, clearly, yeah. the way we filmed uh, football in those days, he, would, you, he might have had 11 or 12 that were actually on the telly. And he said, they were all like one on the line and one when I miscued and it, it, and, it, and it deflected in off some defender. And he said, I realised that it was just one of those seasons that you score a lot of goals. I mean, you think of Antonio not being as prolific with the goals and then he scores that absolute worldie. Well, that's the thing, uh, yeah. And... and and famously, he hasn't scored a goal outside the box ever. And that was on the line. And that, that goal was on the line. So technically, he's outside oh, the box. God, I tell you what, uh, for about however many minutes it was, the whole halftime interval and about five minutes into the second half, I was so excited thinking we're going to do United on on the last right. day. How absolutely delicious was so that? I've got, I've got, I've got your stats for your first. Go for it, go for it. So let's go 66, 67. So out of the the goals that Jeff scored, so Jeff scored forty, was it forty one in yep. total? But twenty nine in the league. Um, he was second to Ron Davis, who scored so thirty, who scored thirty seven. Ron Davis. Ron Davis. Nationality is. Yeah, what? boy, oh. And then 66, 65, 66. He ended up scoring 23 in the league. And he was fifth behind. Uh, top was Roger Hunt and Willie Irvine, both for 29. Then, Willie Irvine for Coventry City. Yeah. Uh, no, for, no, for Burnley. Burnley. He was what at did Burnley. he play for Burnley? Yeah. And then Tony Hate, Hat, um, Hate, Hate, Hate Lee for Aston Villa, 27. David Hurd, 24. Then Jeff Hurst. So, yeah. So he so scored. He means, he means league goals only. League goals. Yeah. And it's goals true only. that in that season, um, he played 46 games and uh, four cup games, but didn't score in any of those. All 28 of his goals were league yeah. goals. So, and that's why yes, good spot, Nige. It's not so you can you can actually have a little nip of the whiskey now. I think and have one one decent. Oh, and and who was second? Down. Who was second in in 72, 73? Then so Brian don't Robson tell, was top. Me. Give us a clue. Give us a clue. Brian top. Robson was, had scored 28. The next person down had scored 27 oh what luck that's got to have been greasy isn't it and he played for wolves oh no greasy had retired then uh john richards john richards there yes. we go. and then there was a big gap between bill bill durden bill Who? durden bill Who? durden for sheffield united scored 20 at third anyway um there you go well mark Haley's dad was tony Haley. there we go good to know thanks there Mark. we are and wasn't it wasn't that uh isn't there isn't there a link there with um Spandau Ballet. No. Tony Hadley, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, so let's 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 travel with our let's do our time travel with, with Pop. So with 72, 73, you know, this absolutely fantastic season where we beat everybody except Liverpool away. You know that doesn't happen very often. No. Um and then we get to 73, 74. And I don't want to kind of make this whole thing about 73, 74, because it's about Brian Robson, but 73 74 season what a shocker this is the season before we win the fa cup we'll come back to that in a moment but we've got to actually answer those questions have we the questions that i asked yeah. beforehand, who what how many games did brian robson and keith, keith. robson play together in that fantastic season which was wait for it 76 76 would it have been 76, 77? Yes, it would. Keith Robson only played 10 games in that period. And this is Brian Robson coming back to West Ham. Yeah. Um, okay. And Brian Robson in 76, 77 played 14 games but did not 
score. So his return to West Ham was uh, spectacularly ordinary, mm. one has to say. And um, we missed relegation by two points. So if he had yes, scored a few, yeah. we might have been okay. Um, but he didn't. So these are the – how many games? What do you think? Let's uh, – Russ, have a guess. Go three. On. Three. You're very unlucky. It's two. Two. They played uh, Everton away, uh, and that was 3-2. Uh, to Everton, and they played West Bromwich Albion away on the 30th of October 1976. They played together, so two away games. Mm. Now, can you tell me, you have a little guess, which fantastic, utter, worldy, genius West Ham player made his debut in a game, one of the only two games that the two Robsons played? Made his, made his league debut. Made his league debut. No, made his debut. No, what, league, what? league debut. League debut. Oh, league, league debut. debut. Okay. Debut. Can I just, can I just yeah, check just, that? Yeah, just check it. It was QPR. Just, QPR, yeah, QPR fourth round of the League that. Cup. I've got to check that because, we, you know, we basically I, I've got to be doing my homework and I, it wouldn't be fair otherwise. So we're talking 76, 77. It could, of course, be a mistake in, in this esteemed book, mm. right? Okay, so that's the 30th. Of and you're thinking you're saying oh, the I don't know I'm saying the twenty. It's a, tw a few days before that. It was can I just seven. tell you? Can I for a man who was not even born then? Can I take my cap off to you, Mr. Budden? Because you are absolutely correct. So he made his lead debut. though. made his lead debut. You're right. Made his no, lead debut. no, but it's not nearly as much fun. The thought that he might have made his debut in the game with the two Robsons playing. Yeah, but he still played with two Robsons. That's yeah, true. One or, one or two and games, and one of them was There are many people who played in those two games, clearly. But there he was, and his name was Alan Devonshire. Alan Devonshire. So great, a great was. side. That side was. Look at that side. It's Billy Bonds and Frank Lampard, and Curbs and Tommy Taylor and <laughs> Padden. I mean, in Brooking. theory, this was the season after we got to the final of the Cup Winners' Cup pop figures, and we did actually finish. In, in the dizzy heights of 17th position, missing out on relegation, as we did in the most of the 70s, by two points. <laughs> so what a fantastic team, like the team that had Hurst, Moore and Peters and finished regularly in the lower half of the top division. So those of you, because I know there's still West Ham fans who go, oh, what a failure, seventh. We didn't build on being six. Listen, guys, we got to the semi-final of the Europa League, having not really played a proper, decent run in Europe for, what, 40-odd years? Yeah. That's a long time. And we had to get used to it. I mean, there's things that everybody, everybody who plays in Europe regularly knows that we didn't. And it was a steep learning curve for us. But that's Yeah, you're right. And I think that's, that's something which I'd like us, in terms of bringing players in this year, in this summer, people who have a bit of nouts in the European stage. I think we need it. Look how important. Who yeah. scored the two goals against Seville? The two European experienced yeah, players point. who had played in the Champions League, basically mm. Yarmolenko and Suchek. Yeah, good point. So there, there we go. So but, but we yeah. are supposed to be talking about the Mr. <laughs> Robs. Yep. We, I mean, you know, this this game has that habit, this this programme has this habit of doing of what, what's in the news. You know, yeah. we're doing a bit of both. And because um, we're not anywhere near um, Nigel's shed, and Nigel could just, of course, pull a program out and show us a picture from a game, you're going to have to use your imagination, people, um, because obviously we, we've not got the shed man here tonight. But um, Keith Robson, uh, while we're on the subject, because we will, we may we well, we may well go in that direction. Tell me how many goals, Mr. Budden, did. Keith Robson score for West Ham. Oh, I I know this because oh because we've had him on the show. <laughs> we had Robbo on the show the other week. He's already forgotten. Robbo, I hope you're listening to this because this is how this is how determined. This is a young uh, man. Uh, it was like nine. Uh, go on, go on, nine, go on. Nine, nine, 18, 19, 18, 19. He didn't score 19. a lot. Nineteen. Nineteen. No, 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 nineteen. Just got yourself out of the fire there. Oh, yeah. It's very good. It's all right. We won't see him until August. It's all right. Well, Don't worry. He, he scored just under a goal every four games, whereas wow. Robbo scored. What did we say? Um, 
51 goals in 115. There's almost a goal every other game. And who's the only West Ham player who actually achieved that goal every other game? Nice Sir easy Jeff. one for you. Sir Jeff. Sir Jeff. So we are talking about Sir Jeff and Pop Robertson in the same breath. So, okay, not so many games, not so many seasons. But if you look at Robson's career stats, that's something something fantastic. By the way, do you know the sport that his wife was an England international? Her name was, was Maureen, is Maureen Heppel? Shot put him. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Uh, hockey, table tennis. Yes, he got it. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> You total genius. Yes. So Brian Robson, not just the the, the the delicate man on his on his toes, he managed to persuade a sporting female sporting genius, um, Maureen Happel, to put, to marry him. Or well, you never know, she might have got swept off her feet by by his very delicate um, uh, little Brian Robson things, of course. There we are, table tennis. In, in it comes now. You're too late. No, Russ just got, did yeah, it. Yeah, got Russ it. Just it. without the help of anything. He just did it. He just did it. Yeah. Table so let me, let me ask you a question, Russ. I think it's Go a reasonable then. question. Um, because it is important to see how our our younger West Ham fans, if I may put you in that bracket, I'll show yeah, you my you, mind. You, you may. You may. Um, how, how do you get access to... Uh, these kind of ideas and thoughts about the greats, as I would call. Paul Robson is not necessarily the, the obvious one, I would argue, one of West Ham's greats, but not an obvious one that people would pick. So no. when you you obviously know a lot about him, even though you didn't see him play in the flesh. So where do you get all that information from? For me, it was always, I've always, as I said, I think when we started doing these, I always did Pop Robson because it was only like talking to the other, like I was said, when we've interviewed Crossy, we've interviewed Co TC, they spoke about Pop. And so, you know, you, and then you start, and then obviously you, you look at, you start, sort of delve into it, you go down the rabbit hole. And I think someone like Pop Robson, um, you know, and we've seen like literally, we, before we even started today, there was comments and stuff. So obviously he's a, he's a, he's a folk hero for a certain generation of, of fans. And so that's why I it's doing because I thought it'd be really, really interesting. And um, and we can see what just by the fact. I mean, looking at I'm just looking at his stats. Um, three, four, five, six, seven, top eight, top eight for ever in league goals. Poppies four. I'm looking four, through his five, career, yes, yeah. seven, he eight. Was a, at West he Ham was a it's goal mental. scorer, and you're quite right. And I think Russ, this is why this is such a brilliant choice the postseason to look at a natural goal scorer because yeah. that is what we lack yeah. at the moment the only thing we lack as a side is a natural goal scorer who would you russ if you could have anybody anybody be realistic who would you have let's just say west ham really put their money in their with their hands in their pocket and they thought we're going to splash out and get ourselves a proper goal scorer Someone who would come to West Ham, because that's not be crazy. So, someone who might take a chance. Oh, it's tough. Do you know what? I would have spent £51 million on Haaland, but we wouldn't have been able to afford his, his wages. Um, for me, oh, who, do I, who would I want? Who would I want? Because the thing is, that I think, I think the trouble is, look at like, some of his goals with Pop Robertson's goals. You know, there was, there was headers. There was, I mean, he wasn't a big lad. He wasn't tall. No, and he's no. so many, so many headers. Um, and, you know, left, left, right, it was both late, both sides, both, you know, left and right footed goals as well, you know, and but also that fox in the box. You don't really get that anymore now in the game, no, modern game. No, For me, I would have, if money was no, oh, not my, realistically, I don't know. There's, there's a guy I really want, a guy from Union Berlin called Teo Anawaii, who's basically a young version of Antonio. He used to play for Liverpool. Um, and he's about 70 million quid. I wouldn't mind him. But who did, you, who did Union Berlin play? Did they play an English side or did they? I remember seeing them on the, the, the telly. I don't know if we play, if he played an English or, or if they played someone who we were playing in the next round um, of mm, Europe. No. But, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, Union Berlin, they played Frankfurt. Right, that must have been they it. They played Frankfurt, and I think they drew. I think they drew two all, or they might have won. Um, he's, I like him because he's, he's like he's basically like Antonio, and I Strong. think 
holding strong. up. He's basically <laughs> he is Antonio, but like I think he's twenty three. Wow. Um So yeah, so someone like that. Um, Where did Union Berlin finish? They qualified for Europa League. I think they did. I All right. Well, he might still go okay. I'll step down to the conference, but I think they finished. Where they finish this this season? Table, table, table. Union Berlin finished fifth. So I think that qualifies them for yeah, because uh, yeah, I think they they've got five and six is their Europa leagues and seven is their conference, same as us. All right. So, so, the, so same FC, as us, really. Yes, FC. Are they saying that Bundesliga is, is is anything like as good as the? Premier? Well, I mean, I mean, you look at it. Bayern Munich, Dortmund, Leverkusen, Leipzig are the top four. Let's go. Rangers <laughs> knocked out Dortmund. The days of German greats are kind of. Um, yeah no i don't i don't i think there's i think there's you know there's nowadays it's like you don't get you know not, most of those strikers are coming to the end of their career or they're always injured so you've got like guys like jamie vardy guys like danny ings and these guys who notoriously score goals usually against us so <laughs> get, they're just getting a bit a bit you know and then like the guys like lukaku who, who's been an absolute flop I mean, I think you'll get a little bit of a renaissance with that forward when when Haaland comes here to would Man City. Be, would would he be our John Radford or Davos Suka buying him too late? Yes, we got yes. him in Lukaku. Yeah. The old the old um, warhorse comes in and um, scores two goals in a season, misses more than he scores. Yeah, I mean, I don't really. I mean, there's 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 loads of players. Obviously, we've been like loads of different strikers. I tell you, the guy I do want is. Andre uh, Andrea Bellotti from Serie A, twenty eight free transfer. If he's not, we're not free transfer. But you know, he's not. You know, he's no, not, no, be out of contract. Expensive wages, but no yeah. money up front. But I think he's a bit of a. He's got a bit of a you know, nasty, nasty bastard look about him. Well, we like yeah. we like that because West Ham have done well in the past. Is there a Pop Robs? Sorry, Pop Robson. Sorry, Pop Robson got Pop Robson. <laughs> This Pop Robson show. Is there a Paolo Di Canio bad boy lurking around who no one will touch who we might pick up? Oh, maybe not. Maybe not a Di Canio bad boy, but there was a lad who I was taught I was talking about the other day called Skamaka. Skamaka. Jan Lucas Skamaka. He looks like a right nasty. He's got tattoos all the way over his neck. <laughs> Can you imagine a tattooed attack? Who's the most tattooed player ever played for West Ham? Oh, probably Arnautovic, I reckon. Or oh, Jesse yeah. Lingard. Jesse Lingard, probably. Yeah, Jesse Lingard. Yeah, that's true. Arnautovic, though, every time he, he went another a million pound in the in the red, he had to put another tattoo on, didn't he? Yeah. And in the end, you couldn't even see his face. Just couldn't he? see him. Just couldn't so see him. But you never know. You never, we, might see, we might see Mr. Lingard in the summer. We might see him come well, back in August. Know, I, I think just when we've given up on him, he'll slip in the back door. But there is still that, 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 there is still that thing about um, uh, him coming with our other favourite from Manchester United. Who's not going down too well there? No, I don't think we'll get him. Well, I think, he's, I, well I, think he wants to be in London. No, I think I think Jesse. I think I can I can see Jesse signing pretty much as soon as his contract's officially. Uh, he ended. made it. He certainly made a big mistake not coming to West Ham. This it wasn't season. his fault though. Man, Man United. And to be honest, look at Ralph, Ralph Rangnick said West Ham were, were a threat, and so that's why he didn't. He didn't. He, we could have him for twenty million pounds. They only finished a couple of points above us, didn't they? Yeah. And in, in essence, yeah. Jesse Lingard's goal cost us the Europa, Europa League. Well, we might have. He only, he only scored two goals, and one was against us. It might have been as much to do with the missed penalty in the last. Doesn't minute. matter. He scored the goal that cost us the Europa League. We're welcoming back for open arms, anyway. But um, that, that we, we, the, another thing, we could have a whole program on players trying not to celebrate a goal against a previous team, and yet in the end failing to, failing to avoid the celebration. It's not, it's not him. It's the players around him, isn't he? Yeah. So uh, they do. You know, it's not me. It's you. You've yeah, done that again governor. with Man United for the second time. I, I mean, Man United and Arsenal. Do you know I haven't? Spurs haven't really bothered me this season. And actually, I, I, I'm, I'm ashamed to admit I wanted them to get the Champions League thing over Arsenal because those two games against Arsenal showed all that was wrong with VAR, referees, crowds. Mm. Everything was wrong in that. Here we are, Skamaka, one step beyond, says Peter. Peter was the one who said the Jesse Lingard thing is like a long drawn out divorce. It's oh, true. No, it's true. true. You yeah. went quiet. It, it, I mean, today it's, it's come. It's 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 come through. Actually, 
happy Hamrit Lanzini might be the most tattooed player. He's got a lot of tattoos. He has indeed, once we can see anyway. Um, <laughs> well, we, we know Tony Cotty uh, spoke highly of yeah. Pop Robson. It's quite interesting because Tony Cotty and Pop Robson share something. What do you think it is? Apart from being two of our greatest goal scorers. Uh, both one hammer of the year? Uh, yes. Something else? I don't know. I don't know what something uh, else is. Well, they both Debut had players. successful second period. Uh, yeah, boomerang players. And came back and quite surprising. And I mean, you could, there'll be those cynics who go, yeah, but when Robson came back and scored all those goals at the end, it was in the second division. These days, the second division is the old fourth division. So for us oldies, we do sometimes think, second, where are we? Third? <laughs> First? What, which playoff? How many? Is it three promoted or four or two? You know, you get that kind of stuff. Yeah. In our, there's those of us who go, I, I have to say, I'm not one who goes back far enough to go to third division south and third division north. We're not too far away from that. We'll probably have, we'd have, um, that we could actually have it again, couldn't we? Um, third Division South, Third Division. There we are, both five foot four. I didn't realise Bob <laughs> Robson was the same height as Tony Cotty. Let's get the two of them together. Um, I wonder if Keith, Keith Robson will be taller than, than Brian. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that would be your next time you speak to either Robbo or Pop Robbo um, yeah. to ask either of them about the other. That I would like to hear. All right, like we'll do it. We'll do it. We'll do it in. in... No. That would be jolly. Oh, yes. so, so I'd like to, before we leave the first period of, of Robson's <laughs> career at West Ham, I'd like to look at 73, 74. Yeah. Um, because I think there are fans, again, and I was uh, that's why I asked you that story about um, that thing about how do you get to hear about Robson and, and those who are told mm. by their dads and granddads about what it was like in the 70s. Yeah. This is the 73, 74 season, right? Okay. Billy Bonds, Hammer of the Year. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, Ever-present, Frank Lampard. I always think that Frank Lampard is a little bit like, just just live with this one a little bit. Frank Lampard, senior, I think it's, if you look historically about him and Aaron Cresswell, same number of appearances, or certainly will be if Cress makes a few more, both kind of made mistakes at the key point in the European competition. I don't want to be saying that. Both scored unbelievable goals with their left feet. Remember? The Cresswell curled, even the one recently against Everton. Yeah. Um, uh, Frank Lampard's spanking goal. Last game of the season against Liverpool, we drew 2-2. Once he hit this ball, he went... <laughs> also, the goal he scored against Dane Haag. In the quarterfinals in '76, another one that um, you have the the, the commentary that uh, anyone who's looked at it on YouTube will have heard is the where they have the Dutch commentary. For some reason, nobody bothered revoicing it in English. I thought I might do that because I actually have got the whole game with just the crowd, so we could do that. Um, he hits this one, and the commentator, as he goes to it, he goes Lampod, Lampod, <laughs> Lampod. How do you make Pod Pod Lampod? <laughs> And it's got another one of those benders, if you've got the expression of how much how much heavier the ball was in those days. And yeah. now the bloody balloon compared to what it was then. And he gave it the most almighty thwack and it ended up in the top. And he does that usual Lamp Lampard celebration, which is just like, like that thing. It kind of it was a cross between the early Jeff Hurst and the Bobby Moore just running back to the centre spot and not even celebrating at all. He didn't. <laughs> So we've got uh, Frank Lampard ever-present and Cresswell is an ever-presenter in many seasons he's done. There aren't many who are ever-present these days. Um, Clyde Best and Billy Bonds shared top score. It's like that season when Julian Dix and, I don't know who it was, someone else. Julian Dix was top scorer equal with somebody. Dixie? <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah, well, we did that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and some amazing... Shots and headers. But um, in that season, 73, 74, you kind of knew things were going wrong. We were drawn against... Um, uh, the, the, I'm looking at kind of links here. But this is the low spot. We drew a third division Hereford. We had played them when they were in non-league. We kind of started them <laughs> off there. We drew them again and we lost to them yeah. somehow. 
there was a famous game when we were playing against them at home in, in the third round where Pat Holland scored. It was not unlike the uh, Declan's last-minute equaliser against yeah. Kidder. It was Pat Holland's last-minute equaliser against Hereford. And we thought, oh, thank God we're still in the tie. Didn't have extra time. <laughs> Went to Hereford and then lost uh, Hereford. Oh, my God. So that's bad enough. Um, you could be excused for going out against Liverpool, which we did. Um, uh, and also, those of you, again, who are old enough like me will remember Ted McDougall. Ted McDougall. That was another one of those expensive failure signings. And that's perhaps a lot of what this season was about, expensive failure signings. He came along like, hey, Bournemouth, oh, you know, he's going to be the great thing. But he did love himself a bit, Ted. Sorry if you're listening to it now, Ted, if you're still around. <laughs> but he loved himself. You know, you got the feeling there he was looking at himself in the mirror all the time. You know, he wasn't an ugly guy, but um, he didn't do it at West Ham. Let me just see that season. 14, 14 games. This fantastic goal scorer managed to score twice. Well done, great mate. Um, meanwhile, uh, um Clyde Best and Billy Bonds get 13 each. And 73-74 uh, is um, the last uh, season for Pot Robson in his first uh, incarnation, if you like. It's also Clyde Best's last, except Clyde Best went out as top scorer, uh, as he often was with West Ham. He's the only player who's ever been played with alongside. There is, there is. That's, that's a perfect thing. That's a perfect picture of Ted McDougall. Well done, great mate. What is he doing there? I have no idea. I have no idea. He's there. I think he's. There's definitely whatever he's doing. He thinks he's honestly they look terrible. They look like bloody ballet shoes. They, oh, do. they look awful, don't they? And look, look at the, I mean, the shirts. Well, you know they've they've seen better days, haven't they? There is, well. there is a rumor which I think um, Tony Gale once told me, which which is funny when he wasn't even there. But Gailey knows these things. Gailey told me that I think that... Um, oh, here we are. I'm not going to believe it. Smudge Smudger has put this up just as I'm about to tell the story. <laughs> but apparently Bonzo completely flattened McDougal for something he'd done or said, something arrogant or whatever. Anyway, um, I think that was when McDougal stopped even looking like he was going to score and then eventually kind of slinked off. But we were absolutely shocking. How we did not go down, we got 37 points. We were one of three teams, Chelsea and Birmingham. Chelsea, get used to this, guys. Never mind about getting yeah. bloody um, wow. baseball managers or whatever. You're, the old days are coming back to Chelsea. I just feel it in my oh, Could you imagine? Can you imagine? I'm looking forward to it. So Southampton, Manchester United and Norwich went down. So that was something good about that season. Can you believe it? Man United are still only a few points away from us in those days. Oh, there we are. Thank you. He smacked him in the mouth after losing. I mean, no, I don't think he would have smacked him in the mouth for being lazy. I think Bonzo, yeah, I mean, there, there's certain some little code of ethics that Billy Bonds always abided by. And he wouldn't just smack someone in the mouth for being lazy. It would have been for being arrogant or slagging somebody else off. Or, I don't know, because McDougall, would, you know, it was him. It was no disrespect to Rodney Marsh, who we all love. Uh, but Rodney Marsh at Manchester City, it's like one team and one player all the time. And he scored loads of goals, but one team, one player. Not <laughs> such a good idea. Um, but there we are. So, Robson kind of leaves, I wouldn't say he leaves under a cloud, because, you know, he is what he is. He scored eight goals. Um, in 22 games, so no, that 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 was the season that kind of upset his, his average a little bit. Mm, yeah. So off he goes, and he thinks, oh, "Who am I going to go to?" So he go he he goes off to Sunderland, who are yeah. then not in the um, first division. And although I don't have my 74 75, I'm pretty sure they are in 75 76. Let's just have a little check. We're going to check. We're going to try. And no, they weren't. So he didn't come up straight away. So he made it. We made a bit of money on him. We made a bit. Of, oh yeah, yeah. We made money, and we certainly got. Um, we got him to play for us in that season. That that I believe that we could have won the league, and I really mm. still think that seventy two, seventy three season, we were absolutely fantastic. Uh, one of our very, very best. I, I will give you the, the. I'll look at the end of that season before I abandon those early seventies because I think again 
those of you who, are, who look to the show for a little bit of education about the old days, um, we got, we got, um, we were just, if we'd had three points more, we'd have been fourth. Ipswich were 48, we got 46. Um, we were not quite so good away. That was the problem. We needed to win a few more games away. Liverpool won in the end with 60. So, you know, we, we, we were probably um, six or seven games short. Yeah. There we are, 74, 75, along with Man U. So um, he had, although, again, actually, that's, a, that's incredible. That's incredible. Um, I'm just seeing that. So I found that I found the link with Robson. I don't know why I didn't see it before. Robson chooses Sunderland over West Ham. Sunderland get promoted. West Ham win the cup. Yeah. Robson chooses Sunderland over West Ham. Sunderland get promoted. West Ham win the cup. That happened twice. What are the chances of that? Crazy. Absolutely. Crazy. I mean, what's that? That is really well done, that man. Well done with that little that little guide uh, suggestion there. Gave 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 us another fascinating. There will never be another Pop Robson. Let me just tell you, the guy who is loved at Sunderland mm. and West Ham, mm. not so much at Newcastle, though he was prolific for them in his early. He got booed when he came back for West Ham against Newcastle. He scored as well. So that's probably <laughs> why they booed him. So here he is. He pops off to Sunderland. He gets promotion with them. Uh, sees West Ham win the cup, sees Sunderland come back, and then he comes to us in the uh, 76 77 season. So you've got to try and get your position here. West Ham's 75 76 season is as bad as yeah. the 74 75 was quite good. We were shocking. I mean, in the second half of that season, admittedly, we nearly won the European Cup Winners' Cup again, and that would have been amazing. But this is a season that started with us playing in the Charity Shield. We kind of didn't turn up against Derby and lost 2-0. But um, just trying to see now, we didn't. 75-76. Um, so oh, Robson also got all these little uh, Keith Robson had the Wembley moments, didn't he? Yeah, yeah that's a good spot. Um, uh, Pop we're in, the, in the Newcastle team that won the 69 Fairs Cup. So... Their last trophy. No wonder they booed him. They thought when he left, that was going to be the end of it. No more. No more. Yeah, better. So, so he comes to West Ham, and they've had a, a, a not a great season, 75-76. They ended up 18th. But if let me just check where they were at Christmas. I think at Christmas... <clears throat> No, uh, in in um after they played Coventry at home, drew one all with them, and Robson scores in that game. Um, West Ham were top. We were, and they were in the early part of seventy five, seventy six. These are the positions they were after the early games: second, third, fifth, seventh, eighth, tenth, eleventh, thirteenth, and they start winning again. Um, sixth, third, second, first. And then they go down. It's, how can you have a, a season of success and then it's a bit like P Pardew? And yeah, then... It's a bit like West Ham anyway, isn't it? We have one good, we, well, until recently, one good season in about five. And those of you, those of you youngsters watching this, that's why Moyes is such a great manager because he's actually produced two good seasons in first, a row. The first time ever in history, top seven. Consecutive season in the top division. It's amazing. It is amazing anyway, but it's particularly amazing if you've had the misery today of been uh, 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 going through these 70s. I mean, it's bad <laughs> enough going through the 60s, but the 70s are shocking. Okay, you might say, uh, you know, 79, 80, we win the cup. Uh, 74, 75, we win the cup. Two good cup, cup runs. And there are people who say, you know, when you say to people, would you, would you do a Wigan? Would you go down and win the FA Cup? Oh, yes, I would. Well, we're not that kind of side anymore now, and I don't think that's going to happen. No. So 76, 77, Robson decides um, uh, he's gone as far as he can go with Sunderland, although he's going to make that decision again a bit later on. And he comes to West Ham, scores 14 goals, 30 games in the league, and um, is looking the part. Scores two goals in the last game of the season, 
um, which in, in effect saves us from relegation. This is the. I wonder if this is the. This is the famous game. This is famous game where Frank Lampard. I don't know if I'm going to say this or no. Have I got a career worth saving? Probably not. Um, but uh, had you had a career? I did. Yeah. Well, especially when I said this. So Frank. Frank had a little um, uh, uh, accident on the road. It wasn't him who had the accident, but. Um, he still came came to play for West Ham that night, and I believe he scored. Yeah, he did. He scored the first goal of the game. But we also had we had Lampard and Brian Robson scored twice. We also had a new a newbie. We had Jeff Pike scoring in the fifty third minute. Um, oh yeah, Terrace Banner. These are the old days of bad bad boys. Terrace Banner, Manchester United fans meant there was more space for West Ham. <laughs> um, and indeed, still only 29,000 in a ground that could take 42, so still a few short. But Clive Thomas refereed that game. And then um, uh, in that game, Gordon Hill put Man United ahead after one minute. And if we lost that game, we would have been relegated. In fact, we might even have gone down if we'd drawn it. But then West Ham, as usual, last game of the season, get, get everything and unlike this season although it was at home you know chicken run and all that and robson on his return to the club in that season so he had a habit of doing i mean it would have been quite nice to have had a young pop robson at brighton this weekend i oh. think we might, we might have made the difference but um there we are a natural striker for a game you need it he scores twice um there we are len heppel his father-in-law was a ballroom dancer so not only is it, and then he has a daughter who's a table tennis uh, 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 international for England. Too exciting. <laughs> Too exciting. Had a hand in training his son-in-law. What? To train him to dance ballroom? They probably like, in, just in terms of, like, you know, movement, maybe. I don't know. What are you saying? That, they, that they get, like, they get married like... His wife, he married his wife before he played football. What, at 16? No, but, like, during, he probably just... Maybe flexibility. I don't know. Oh, you to pirouette. Yeah. Who knows? Or, or something like that, maybe. Well, there's one thing that Robson only did once with West Ham, and that was go down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, and there he is. Yeah. And there we are. So we went down. He played his second season back, 37 games, one in the League Cup, three in the FA Cup. And scored eleven. He still scored nine goals in the league. Yep. I said he was top scorer. Uh, I do believe he was. I'm just going to confirm that. He... Caller. he got eleven. He was indeed. No, he nicked no. it off Derek Hales. There's a name, Derek Hales, Charlton with a great oh, big yeah. beard. Goodness me. Yeah. Um, yeah, will, Derek yeah. Hales. His greatest season also got relegated. So maybe not such a great season. And look at this, some of these teams in the first division that season. This is Nottingham Forest winning the league, by the way. So it shows you we're getting into that era. We've got Liverpool at second, Everton at third, yep. Man City at fourth. So that's quite interesting. The only weirdos is Coventry at seventh. We've got Leeds at ninth, um, Birmingham in the first division. And um, QPR just beat West Ham by one point. We still could have avoided it. Bristol City. If we'd won that last game, we played Liverpool. If we'd won the last game, we would have uh, stayed up. Only we lost 2-0 yeah. to Liverpool, McDermott and Fairclough. Bloody Liverpool. Mind you, the, the justice was having that Liverpool lost out to Nottingham Forest in the end. <laughs> so we got we got Robbo scoring, and he's then got to make a decision, hasn't he? Amma, Sunderland are in the second division, so does he go back to Sunderland? Or does he stick it out at West Ham? Well, thank goodness for us, he sticks it out at West Ham for 78-79. Why? Because although we only finished fifth, 78-79, Pop scores 26 goals. 24 in the league, one in the League Cup, and one in the FA Cup. Uh, and uh, on fire. Only now he's playing in a side with Phil Parks. Mm. How about that, eh? With Alan Taylor, Tommy Taylor's still playing. I forgot yeah, Tommy Taylor played, was still played playing. Three games that year. Amazing. Um, we've got um, Phil Brignall, who had one appearance as a substitute. <laughs> These are the people you should be interviewing, Russ. Oh, don't worry, we'll get we'll get we'll get around to eventually. We've got to get Phil's. We've got to get Phil's top top. Um, <laughs> Phil's eleven. Top, top eleven, and also Nicky Morgan, who managed two appearances. 
Um, I thought Nikki Morgan was, she's in the House of Lords, isn't she? Or is that another Nikki Morgan? I don't know. Possibly, I don't know. Anyway, so here we are, the 78 79 season, and the, the ITV cameras are going down to West Ham because West Ham scored that season 70 goals. And you notice that how many goals did we score this season, Russ? 80 something, wasn't it? 85. Five goals. Yeah. 85. Mental. Anyone saying, of course you're all disappointed we didn't beat Brighton on the last game. Of course you are. But take the thing in the round. 85 goals and we haven't got a natural goal scorer. The first time ever we've scored in every home league game Good. since 1980 something. That might be 1980, 81. But we were in the second division then. Okay. Although so it goes, 80, it goes down, it goes. I, I did. I went back. It went back to twenty uh, nineteen twenty six twenty seven. We were in the top division, and we scored okay. in every league well, game. What is even better? There's only one home game that we failed to score in, and what was special Two. about that game? Two, oh, wasn't it? What was the yeah, other one? It was the. It was. We one was the Carabao Cup. One was the um, Europa League, wasn't it? Was it? Was it oh like yes. So we're counting those. I'm thinking about domestic. I'll count. We, oh, yeah. Oh, Domestic right. Carabao yeah, I mean, Cup. I mean, yeah. We played the kids in that game. Yeah, Let's we played the kids. the kids. The kids would have kept, found him in for that wonder goal in the fourth minute from yeah. exactly the same spot as Masuaku had scored yeah. uh, just a few days ago against Chelsea. That was a little magic place in London Stadium. But um, the main thing I was going to say was uh, that we managed, the one of the games we didn't score in, we still won. Which was the, yeah. <laughs> it's quite good to win a game you don't score in. Nah, exactly. When it's against the team that end up winning the league and you put an end to their four years of success in the league. Yeah. So uh, so we're looking at um we're looking at Brian Robson, who was to have a namesake, um, who also had started off with the black and white stripes, only that was West Brom. Um and people go, Brian Robson, they go, oh, yeah, England player, blah, blah, blah. I say, no, Brian Robson only played for the under-23s, I think. Yeah. And they go, no, he didn't. He was a... Oh, you're talking about the other one. The, um, the where other did he one. Come? Middlesbrough or something. The other Brian Robson. Oh, there yeah. is only one Brian Robson. Uh, tell me, Russ, why is he called Brian Pop Robson? I don't know why he's called Pop Robson. I don't know. The most lame disappointing i thought it was because he set fireworks off in the changing room or i don't know um uh, let let um uh, wind did he, did, let did wind he like did he like box. did he like like coca-cola <laughs> i don't know pop i don't that know also would have been no apparently he loved pop music he played the radio all the time they said, I'll turn the bloody radio off and he'd say oh, i love pop music <laughs> i love pop music what that's such a lame reason. Um, but there you are. Uh, I love Pop Robson. I think he's a great name, isn't it? Pop. What, what was the last player who had a nickname for West Ham whose nickname became part of the name they were known as? See, now, this is why we need the Shedman, because he'd have five straight out. Shedman, if you're still up and you've stopped drinking the milk and gone on to the whiskey... Shedman, I've got to just, if you're just writing in, please tell us the answer to those two questions. One, was what was the last West Ham player whose nickname actually became almost a name he was known by? And also, what was the other question we had that he would be able to tell us? But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's the, yeah, because it's like where it's like it's like nicknames, but it's like I mean, yeah, you said Pop was is now known as Pop Robson, isn't it? It's like you're thinking like Pancho or Reg or yeah, but they but they're like they're not or Stretch, but they're not not their name, was they? You know, Stretch is the nickname of Alvin Martin, rather Pop was then adopt adopted his name, wasn't it? Like Mad no, Dog and people you've got like on that. Wikipedia, it's Pop Robson on Wikipedia. That's what they call it. Not Brian Pop Robson. It's Pop Robson, or it was this morning. If he's, if he's, uh, Fat Frank. <laughs> What's that got to do with anything? Well, oh, he's, he's, say Fat Frank. Yeah, that's what you're saying. Fat yeah, Frank. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so his nickname was Fat, was it? <laughs> Razor Ruddock. I'll give you that. I think that's definitely correct. I don't, I'm uh, Fat Frank. I like John Moncur. Shaka, because Shaka's first name's Neil. 
Fantastic. So Shaka was Neil. his name? Shaka, well, his Shaka. email address is Neil, he's Neil Shaka. So it's like, but he's, he's, I think by birth he's Neil, but he's, he's, he's Shaka Hislop. That's his name. So, yeah. I think Razor Ruddock, 100%. Yeah, Razor Ruddock, top, yeah. Top draw comment. But is that all we're going to have? What was the other thing we wanted to see? If we, we I can't remember. <laughs> it's going to come back in a moment, guys. Sorry, the old brain is just kind of fudging a little bit. So Robson scores, incredibly, 26 goals in 78, 79. Why does he leave? Well, Sunderland finished a place above us, didn't they? That season, didn't they? Promotion. Promotion. That... Point. We missed it by six points. So he probably thought, well, you know, I've done all I can. I've scored a, a lot of goals. Yeah. Let's go. Let's stay with Sunderland. Did he make the right decision? Well, no. But he did. Because if he was after promotion, if he was after promotion, he yeah. was then playing in the first division. Yeah, after yeah. That season, if he'd stayed at West Ham, he wouldn't have been playing the first division. But he'd have won the FA Cup, or would he? What happened to us? Who did we sign to replace him? Can you remember? I wasn't around. But I want to say, Pearson. You're correct. All right. Yeah. It's another one of those great. Um, Great uh, uh, commentaries by Brian Moore, where where he's he he incorporates the the action into what he's saying when he says Pearson shot goal. Remember Pearson shot goal. One of my favourite bits of commentary. Pearson shot goal. What? <laughs> what does that mean? But that's great. That and that was the brilliant thing about Brian Moore. He could come up, come out with these things, and and there are some fabulous. He, he described as Brian Robson in one of those commentaries as squirming in a goal. Squirming. That's not squirting, is it? It's no. squirming. Yeah. How do you squirm a goal in? But he's he in. He you know what he, he means? Yeah, because he's, he's he was like five for eight that, as well. And he squirmed it in. So we love Brian Moore. And I, and I think actually Brian Moore invented a, a bit of commentary there. So um, should we look at his... Let's look at his, um, one of the great things about, um, one of the great things about Pop is his last game. Why was that a great thing? Why should West Ham fans, even if that was the only goal he scored in his entire career at West Ham, why should <laughs> I, we? I know this great? one. I know this one because this one. it was against Millwall. It was at the den <laughs> and they went down Lost two after one. the game. Not, not because of that goal, but uh, that goal certainly... Uh, couldn't have done them any favours. The irony is they won the game, but they still yeah. went down. Ha ha! Ha ha! What a shame! Um, and his first, his first game, his debut for West Ham. When was that? I think already said in February '71. What was special about that? Don't know. He scored. I know he scored yeah, in his debut. He did score. He scored a, 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 and not many players score on their debut for West Ham. Here's another one for you, Shedman. How many people have scored on their debut for West Ham? It's like how many West Ham managers have won their first game in charge? Do you know that? Not many. No. You know who the last one was? I think. I think actually, Moyes didn't he win his first game in charge? Second time round, but then that's not his first game in charge, is it? Um, last West Ham manager to win his first game in charge. Last first league game. I mean, but last first game. Slav? First game of any description. Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Slavon. When did Slav, what was Slav's first game? What season? It would have been. It would have been. It would have been the. Um, 15-16. The Europa League. No, it would be no, the qualifiers, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would have been. So he wouldn't have won that. Zola? No, it was Alan Gerbishley. Really? Um, West Ham beat Manchester United 1 0 with uh, Rio Coca, the captain, who scored, I think. Duke, Duke, Duke. And um, how many months before Gerbishley won again? <laughs> I don't know. A lot. A lot. And a half. So there's not a lot to be said for winning your first game if it takes you a quarter of a year to win your next one. <laughs> Oh, so, there we go. But there we go on the blessed front. So overall, we'll, he he decides at the end. He makes his decision. 
He's had a great season with West Ham uh, in 78, 79. He's going to go. So we know we're going to win the FA Cup. Makes you want to think, can't we, can't we get him to join us and then leave again? And <laughs> then the the can I do it now? win the FA Cup. It's guaranteed, although wherever he goes, he'll get promotion. Could have done it this year, because obviously Sunderland got promoted, didn't they, in the playoffs? And that's a brilliant thing, isn't it? Not quite to the Premier League, though, is it? No, but it's good to see him back. Good it's him good back. to see them back. This is yeah. a this is a team that, that, that as my as my Sunderland friend reminded me, there was a game early in this season where Manchester City were playing in the Champions League, and they got thirty one thousand. And yeah. Sunderland were playing home to Oxford United or something. They got thirty three thousand. Surprise me, mental. Two thousand more. Champions League versus the old, the new first division. So utterly fantastic. So in the end, this is a man who um, has scored over a hundred goals for West Ham. One hundred and four from his two fabulous seasons of twenty eight and twenty six. So in other words, he scored half of those. In just two, two seasons, seasons yeah. um, but 104, he scored 50 in both his um, periods at West Ham. So consistent there, 139 appearances in the first lot, 53 goals. 115 in the second lot, 51 goals. Um, in both of those sets of appearances, he scored 47 league goals. Um, and this is not many games for a lot of goals. 104 goals, 94 in the league, six in the League Cup and four in the FA Cup. So scored um, a tenth of his goals in, in cup competitions. Um, but uh, interestingly enough, that 73-74, uh, it's a pretty good season to have left West Ham because it's also the season that um, Bobby Moore left. Um, and... That 73-74 season, bearing in mind you've got more and all these other. Do you know what was memorable about, about the beginning of that season? No I idea. I think even Glenn Rhoda didn't do this. No idea. Not winning, First but... 11 games, not one victory. Jesus. In 11 games. Oh, God, 73, yeah, yeah. 74. And this is with Bobby Moore. Admitted in his last season. Strangely, when Bobby Moore left, and this isn't necessarily a popular thing, and you you notice that I'm choosing to say this not in the program about Bobby Moore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, once he left, we started winning. So what's that about? Is this Brian Deer? Is this Stag's point about always being on the team sheet and never having to play hard in uh, in the practices? Oh, and Stag. You love steak. Oh, do you know what I had? It, I sat, I sat, I sat with him at a player night a few weeks ago. Oh, he was fucking hilarious. He is such good value, isn't do he? Do you know he had, they had, it's, and, they, and they told me he, he told me a story. They had to, they did a night like a few, one before, and they had, I think Colton was Colton Cole was one of the guests and stuff. And Stag went up to him afterwards. And went, do you know right? I scored. More goals I scored in, in one game. You did a whole fucking season. <laughs> to, to Coley. So Coley had a season when he scored less than five, presumably. Yeah. Oh. I can't imagine he played many games. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, that's, he cracks that's, me up. that's vicious. That's really. Yeah, but that's it. That's him, though, in us. That yeah, that's, that's Stag. And let me ask, uh, ask any of you who haven't seen Stag, check out some of our European Cup Winners' Cup footage because mm. stag unlike jeff first was prolific in europe scored yes. a lot of his goals for west ham in europe and he has the most again all due respect to stag who's one of my favorite people he's one of the most shocking goal celebrations you've ever seen he doesn't know what to do with himself he sort of waves his arm around like a like a guy in a bath with with, with I don't know what it's but just, look at but if you look at the uh, look at the european statue outside <laughs> Brian Deer's at the front. His name's at the front of the thing. Not the people who, people who scored the goals. They're at the back, apparently. But he's at the front. Is that right? <laughs> I love, love he, Stag. He told I me mean, that the other I, day. Should we not? Should Stag not have his own show? I mean, I he think, could do it. I think we should get. I think we might have to do. Yeah, but it'll be. We'll have to block out like five hours, wouldn't we? Uh, we'd have to block out five hours, and we couldn't start until nine o'clock. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, and really, probably ten o'clock. You probably have to have respect for people 
but then, you know, come on, come on, we're going to move that. Come on, Brian. Yeah, we've seen the picture behind you. Now carry on. Come on, come on. Yeah, bless him. Well, let's look at yeah. let's look at a, a couple of other weird things. Um, uh, these two facts that I mentioned tangentially at the beginning, which are quite fascinating. 82-83, he played for Chelsea. Now, he would have been 37 then. Wow. So where were Chelsea in 82-83? I imagine they were in the second division. Must have been, think yeah. Jeff Hurst was managing them? Because Jeff Hurst might have got him back there. Come on, when he did might, Jeff Hurst manage been. Chelsea? Let's have a look. Oh, was that 81? I've got to check the 82-83. Yeah, so let's, uh, let's do our homework. Because, of course, these were lame years. But for the Chelsea's of this world, Two, Chelsea were in the second Chelsea. division. It was not. Yeah, it was seventy. He, he managed Chelsea between seventy nine and eighty one. So no, not quite. He might have put in a good word for Pop, but there was Pop yeah. at Chelsea in the second division, and he scored, of course, as he always yeah. did. Um, scored uh, three goals in um, a few appearances. He, he didn't have his goal scoring techniques, but there is that lovely stat, and it's my favourite stat of him. Uh, 83 84. He played for Sunderland at 38. They needed to win on the last day to stay up, and he scored in the 2 0 victory on that day. 38 years of coach. He was player oh. coach for Chelsea, apparently. Player Employed coach. A player coach. Mm. Still put himself on and scored a few. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he played with a lot of West Ham players. I'll I tell you what, he would be, I mean, I know he's a very shy man as well. Um, but uh, he would have some stories to tell if you got him a couple of drinks, particularly if you did it in the northeast. If you if you corner him in a bar in Sunderland, especially yeah. now when they're all in a very good mood, see him and I'd say, "Come on, Pop, I want you to tell us about all these players you played with. Who was the best? Who was the worst? Yeah. Who, he's going to have Trevor's going to yeah. be up there. Uh, I mean, we'll, if we'll hopefully get him on anyway soon. He's, I mean, yeah, we might have to go up, might have to go up there, but um, yeah, we hope we hope to get him on soon. Which, well, you don't travel though, do you? I mean, you got Zoom, haven't you? Or would you have to go yeah, up there and say? Yeah, it's different. It's different for some. There's a certain. There's a certain. You know, genre. Sort of type of. I mean, some people are okay if they've got like people who can do it for them. Um, I mean, we had bloody tried to get Trevor Morley on the other day, and he couldn't figure it out for life, no money, you know. And Trevor, he was at the gate. He was at the last. Know, he said, it's Sunday, no, he, he said he waved hello. Yeah, he said hello. Played for both sides. Yeah, he, he did. played for both sides. It looks like something out of shoot. But there you are. That's an, that's an old one. So yeah. So um, yes, it would be lo- it would be lovely to hear Pop Robson, but he he certainly was in that era with uh, Trevor Booking, and you sense that even though he did only play a couple of games with Alan Devonshire, he would have no doubt been a nice target man for Dev. Oh, definitely, definitely. definitely. So as we have, we approach our 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 finishing time today, Russ, which I know is a quarter to eleven, and um, because we get we. We lost at least a quarter of an hour by not having the shed man here, possibly yeah. a little bit more. And it, shaved and a little bit off that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shaved a little bit off. Yeah, I come to the question I have to ask you. If Hurst gets 10, what do we give Pop Robson? Oh, well, obviously, I'm not, I, I wasn't around to see. It'd be interesting to see in the chat what people would say. So, as I said, if, if Hurst is, is 10, yeah, what would you give people, Pop Robson? Invite I, people to give us yeah, their scores. I mean, I, obviously, I... I'm, by, by by listening to you to wax lyrically about him and go through it, I mean, there's no doubt there's only seven more people in the whole history of West Ham who have scored more goals in the league than him. So he's got to be up there. He's got to be. He's got to be like an like an eight, and he got to be like an eight. He's got to be an eight. He's uh, he will be in the top five in goals per game. Yeah. We've got someone giving him a nine. No, Nigel's giving him a nine. Uh, That's Nigel's uh, score. Can I agree with Nigel? Yeah, he's a nine. He's a nine for me. Um, I mean, in many ways, I could almost give him nine point five, but I'm going to give him a nine because he did have he did have a couple of seasons where he didn't hit the back of the net. His first season up with West Ham, coming back, mm-hmm. uh, there he was playing at the top level, and he was still a young man, but he didn't have a very good season there. And that's the only thing keeping him away from nine and a half. But bearing in mind, he's a hell of a lot, very close to, to Sir Jeff. In yeah. terms of almost scoring a goal every other game, mm. it was a, a an out and out prolific goal scorer, yeah. and, and the theme is beautifully set for tonight because that's what all our fan, all our fans out there are saying. We need a Pop Robson. That's what we do. We need a Pop Robson for next season, 
um, and certainly likability. What a lovely man mm. he was! Such a such a, a, a quite a humble and, and a quiet guy, but prolific. And um, for me, I, I mean, I know I might be biased because I was obviously just a I was eleven watching him for the first time, but I remember. It just brings me to, it just makes me want to smile when I think about him. You felt when you had him there, mm. you know, it's quite incredible that he went down with the West Ham side because you felt when he was in the side, you know, if he was anywhere near the ball in the six yard box, you know, it was going to be a goal or going to be very close. He hit the bar a lot, interestingly. There are, there are some things about um, Jared Bowen when he is in, in tight spaces, and I know he does a lot of running and it's a different kind of game and it's a different kind of finisher, but there are something nice about his touches that Bowen often shows mm. that there is a little sort of similarity there. But um, Ro Robbo was a little bit leaner, or Robson, I should say, was a little bit leaner. I wouldn't call him Robbo because that's, that's where you get your differences. You've got your pop and you've got your Robbo. Yeah. Um, the other thing we were, we didn't get the answer to, I've remembered it now, only took me an hour. Um, uh, who, what, what were the other... Um, players did we ever have two players in a west ham side with the same surname when was the last time that happened okay and while you're thinking about that another thing when that does happen of course you need to put on the shirt b robson and what did what did they put on Pop robson's I think p, robson. p p robson there we go so uh, there you go you see, it should have been K Robson, really, shouldn't it? Taylor, Alan Taylor, and Tommy. Tommy Taylor, absolutely correct. Good man, Stuart and Ian Pierce. Very good. You two, you have a higher class of. We do have a very high class of observers, right? Yeah. How about who is the only West Ham, one of the few West Ham players, who insisted on putting his initial on his shirt, even though there was no other player? in the team with his name not even in the squad with his name yeah some people like that don't they some people still do that p for now uh, he hasn't got he hasn't, he, yeah he hasn't got it now has he he no, had it he had a p for now when he started mm. what's that all about did we have a four nows that didn't play yeah jeff we had jeff four nows oh yeah. jeff four now you oh, forget about it he's the only three jeff four eyes and under 23s yeah under 23s <laughs> come on then uh any who was the last player of west Ham to have his initial on a shirt apart from pablo four nows doesn't can't think of one can't think of one Come on, this year. Cole and the, the, yeah. the two Coles. Did they ever play together? Uh, Dave Cole, they, they must. They they must have played. I mean, they played D, D Canny over the <laughs> night. <laughs> There's some quality. You've got some quality people. D McKayley. Um, no, yeah, would have been. Yeah, it could have been the Coles. Could have been the Coles. Yeah, it could have been the Coles. Well, who do we need? To, here's another one. Here's a final one, and I'll shut up. Who would we need to sign who has the same surname as one of the players currently in our squad so we could actually engineer a situation where we had to produce two shirts with initials on them? Oh, okay. So we need to sign... Uh, uh, Fabianski, the young Polish goalkeeper playing for... No, no, sorry. No, no. no. Uh, uh, it's got to be someone like... Is there a Cresswell? No, I'm trying to think of like, Mark no. Bowen, we bring him back. Mark Bowen, bring him back. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think he's still manager. He's a coach at Reading, isn't he? Um, bring him back, player coach. Uh, oh, think, think. What about all that? We've got is there any squad player? Dave, 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 Dave Ariola. Dave Ariola. <laughs> come on, guys. Come he's on. You've got to be, find someone. We've got um, to be, there's got to be is someone. Is there another but, four nails? Um, don't, I don't think it's so. There's got to be another Lanzini. There must be a Lanzini in Serie A. Mm. Or um, come on, think. There's got, be, got, got to be someone. Uh, there's got. It's got. Uh, it's got to be a Johnson. There's got to be a Johnson. Johnson. And who's the other Johnson? I don't know. There's got. Oh, we get Alvin. Get Alvin back and da Alvin and David Martin before he, he leaves. Um, David Martin. Yeah. It's got to be. Uh, oh no! I tell you, we get. I tell you, we get. No. We get Jaul Zuma. Kurt's brother from Dagenham and Redbridge. 
the guy who yeah, did. He wouldn't have far to come, would he? Stay down the road. Stay down the road. Oh, perhaps they can, we can have them both playing on day release. <laughs> Glenn it? Johnson and Ben Glenn Johnson. Johnson. It rhymes as well, except Glenn's been retired for a there few years. There we go. Brennan Johnson, that's it. Brennan Johnson of Forest. Very Brennan good. Johnson of Very Forest. good winger. Very but good when winger. Forest go up to the Premier League, as they're no, clearly going we, to. We don't want him to go up because I want Brennan Johnson. How oh, many fine. players do we want to sign from? I tell you, we need to get we get get David Noble back. I know because Mark's left now. I don't matter. A bit late. But definitely, there are players in that yeah. Huddersfield side, in the Sheffield United side, even in the Luton side. We could bring some of our bring some of bring <laughs> Reese. Like it's like Come the Blues Reece. brothers. There's six. Yeah. There were six ex West Ham players in that squad. It was isn't fantastic. There? I so wanted them to go through. Then Huddersfield scored that bloody last minute goal. What a sickener! Mind you, I think Luton would have Luton would have eclipsed Derby for the lowest number of points. But could you imagine like Kenilworth Row being like a Premier League ground? <laughs> well, you see, this would have hurried up Bedfordshire Council. Yeah. In, um, in getting the new ground sorted out. That is a shocking ground, that is. Oh, Kent horrible. Road. Shocking. Horrible. Seeing a few funny defeats at that ground. That's. Yeah. I mean, what a journey. And then you in this ground where everywhere you, all you can see is bricks, and then you end up losing the game. Harold Suchek. I knew yeah. I knew someone had heard about him. How? Oh, good old Harry. Um, Harry Suchek. Yeah, no, I think, um, I think we've... Yeah, I... I I would like Forrest to go up because I think it'd be nice for Forrest to be in the league, in Premier League. But you I know really they like... been in the league in the Premier League this century. How? Ninety nine, the last time they were up. Wow, that's shocking! Wow, that's crazy. crazy. There we are. Well, there we um, go. There we go. go. <laughs> there we are. That's how, how true to, to Pop Robson, P Robson, or B Robson. Yeah. It's, um, been, it's, it's been it's been emotional it's been a really it's been really emotional. it's been really it's really it's been a really interesting one really i'm glad we've done it i'm glad we've done pop because it's something which I we've know, and I, I, was, for a lot. You know, I was so thrilled when you said quietly to me i'm really glad we're doing pop robson because i thought that's really great norman Basuaki. i thought that's really great that someone who didn't see a player or has only seen like yeah. highlights on, on still excited about him yeah that you know russ Good on you, great mate. There you go. And I really hope you get the personal thing with with Pop. It would be great to see a program with him. I, I for one, would be watching it from beginning to end. Very good, very good. And thank you very much, Martin, for your wizardry as always. As always, always. A pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. And always. A, I, I just want to show you something. Another, you talk about how good our season's been this season, and a and, uh, key point. We haven't been out of the top ten the whole season. You're kidding me. Which that's is, got to be a first. I'd love to is, see last season. Compared which is to this. the first time since 1984, 80, no, 83, 84. We haven't. We've been within in in the in twenty in the twenty fifteen sixteen season. We were tenth. We were tenth for a couple of games, but we've never been outside the top nine. That's mental, isn't it? Mental. Well, I I want you to. Well, next next time you get the chance to, yep. to, get, to get the same thing for um, the season before. Yeah, we could over, overlay that. that. We could overlay that. When you uh, look at our, our Premier League finished compared to our squad value, not oh, too bad. Not too well, bad. That's, that pre- Moyes, you've got to say, those of you who say Moyes, oh, he doesn't buy, buy anyone, the fact that he didn't, <laughs> <laughs> has has not really affected us enormously. Look at this one. Yeah, I mean, look, the point difference is just Brighton is just under is we us than Brighton. Well, you might you might have known that bloody Brighton would be ahead. Yeah, and and and, and an important date for everybody. I'm, I'm sure everyone's. I'm sure Martin's already Martin and John have already booked their uh, their accommodation. Uh, Prague, seventh uh, of June, the final. I've, got, the I've got to let you into a little secret now about this Prague <laughs> thing. It's something that's been at the back of my mind. I've been really peed off about this. Those of you that book your hotels using booking.com, other booking hotel booking companies are available. Be careful when you do that thing that says um, you can you can pull out with 24 hours to go. That's, that's a phrase I've used before, but it's another one. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, uh, there it went, and I booked. You can't book two nights, so you have to do two separate bookings. So I did one booking for the hotel, take us up up 
up to the game and another booking for the day after the game. And then mysteriously, even though I clicked the box that said, um, uh, you know, I don't want to pay now, I'll pay later or withdraw, as it were. All these phrases I've heard yeah. before earlier in my life. Um, and I've gone to my, I, 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 today I thought well, that's a bit odd. Well, I didn't, I haven't bought anything for, um, you know, for seven or eight months on my credit card. <laughs> and there it is. I've paid for one of those nights. And so I'm thinking, yeah, that's a bit of a monk's thing to do. And I've gone back and, and I didn't click anything that said I was buying it. So those of you who think you're being clever, let my foolishness be yeah. your wisdom. Be very clever. Be, be very careful, careful when you click free, or your free cancellation. Up, check out the free bloody, Get your free cancellation and double check it. Hotels in Prague are very cheap at the moment for the seventh of that week. This one Just is same. You have to pay for it. So anyway, I so I'll be going to the final whatever, and it will be <laughs> I don't know Bath City against whoever. Well, there's some cracking names. I mean, I don't know how how well. I mean, I've I've been trying to do my bit around, you know, giving some people some some information and. Uh, that we, you know, obviously we've got to play the double header, don't we? 18th and 25th, so we're not actually technically in the group. Going to the bloody cricket on the 18th, so uh, well, you're, well, you're not if if we're well, playing I'm, I'm at home. Not, well, if it's a home tie, yeah, I will be, but I'll just have to slink off after lunch. It's a few overs and that's it. But um, and obviously uh, that's changed now. Villa Real are now, so we we go straight in the playoffs. We go straight into the playoffs. With like Fiorentina and Nice, and we and won't play Arsenal. these people, though, will we? We won't. I think because I think because of our coefficiency, or where, where are we got? There you go. Because of our coefficiency, where's he gone? Um, we will be. <laughs> we will be. I was just going be, in one of those side seats. I think if I think if Liverpool, I think if Liverpool do well, win. I think you know we we go seeded. Um, so, um, we'll be seeded into that ground, but it's it's. I mean, it's if, it's if it's Liverpool fun. Win the Euro, uh, Euro... Something like that, yeah. But there's 44 teams that enter. The, I mean, 100, you know, 181 clubs enter, uh, play in, in the conference from beginning to end. 181 clubs. I think in the Europa League, it's 58. So there's a lot more, and they've got these things called like Champions Paths and Main Paths. So it's it's based on. Uh, the Champions League and getting through that side, and we're in the main path. And yeah, there's some cracking tights, cracking teams already in there, such as the likes of um, oh, there's some great names. Where is it? I've, I've I did it the other day. Uh, where, in terms of going to the first leg, the first conf, the first round proper, you've got guys like where are they? I've got my list here. Bruno's Magpies, as we know, as as you all know, fourth in the Gibraltar League. Um, we've got. Oh, God. Can you imagine that being a away day? Great day. Away Dino, day. We've got Dinamo Tbilisi. They're in. They're in the first round. Oh, there's a bit of history there. A bit of history, history there. We've got Slingo Ro Rovers, who are third in the Irish Premier League, and Derry City were fourth. We've got Clifton. Derry City, Hill. the Derry Girls. That could be fun there and then that's in the first round qualifier people in the second round already qualified uh people like st patrick's athletic joseph anang is on loan there at the moment west ham goalkeeper um S uh, we've got csk sofia uh, we've got young boys we've got both slavia and sparta prague um, young so boys what the one the team who beat sure. manchester united yes yes exactly then basel they're there and in the third oh, round qualifiers, I'd like to go got, to Switzerland. I'd enjoy that'd be nice. That. Oh, well, in the third round qualifier, already qualified, we have uh, Lugano, who won the Swiss Cup. So you, you could go there. And That's elect um, Gilviente. Yeah, it'd be nice. Gilviente, you know, from um, from Portugal. Panathinaikos. So there's some, you know, there's some oh, good gosh. teams in there. Demis there's Rusos some, team. There's some good teams in there. There's not, there's not good teams in there, but there are some good teams in there as well. There aren't there. Are. Well, I, I, I had this brilliant tweet I, I read today. This guy's put, oh, I can't believe how much I'm looking forward to the conference. It's going to be an absolute, we're going to win it. And then he's next, he said, I've just seen we've got to go through a knockout stage. <laughs> so and that one minute we're going to win it, and next minute we're not even going to make the... the not going to even get through. Stage. Crazy. Didn't didn't it? Catch, someone has asked me, indeed, is this that they've been looking at the whole you see we've got such an observant bunch is this album cover is it the american uh 
the American version of Ambrose Slade's first album, Yes It Is, Ballsy, which was available on Record Store Day. This is Slade's first album when they were called Ambrose Slade, and English copies of it were going, or, or I saw one go on um, eBay. Clearly got too much time on my hands. Clearly got too much time on my hands. £450. Unbelievable. And, and on that bombshell, myself and Martin are going to go to bed. <laughs> Not together, but we're going to bed. So take no. care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Stay lucky. Stay cheeky. Stay positive. And we'll see you guys very, very soon. Much love. <laughs>